All right, guys, what's going on? What we got here, we got a 1991, I believe, Temp Star. Yeah, that serial number looks like 91 to me. Five ton. Um, I thought there was a data manufacturer on here, but I don't see it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Right there. 91. 391. Um, it's already in a vacuum. I wanted to do a much better video than this, but I'm not going to get to because you can, well, you can't really see now. Well, you can a little bit. It's been raining here. And, uh, so I've been trying to, you know, bust ass and not rush the job, but, you know, get done before the rain. So, uh, um, it's in a vacuum. What we did here is we replaced the TXV. This is a 1991 Temp Star, and it's hooked on a 95 train gas furnace and with a 95 train evap coil. So back in 95, somebody changed out the coil in the uh, furnace and left this here. I came out here the other day for a no cool TXV was bad, and uh, so, and I know a lot of you guys. Uh, I'm gonna get some comments. I'm gonna say, man, why didn't you take that thing out of there? Well, that's why I'm shooting this video because you can't change them all. Okay, I mean, you just can't do it. Um, this this guy was straight up with me when I got here. He was like, look, I've called some other people, and you know, and that's what's sad around here. You know, nobody wanted to fool with it. You know, nobody wanted to fool with this system for this guy. All, they all came out here and they said, oh man, this thing's gone. You just, you know, and left him a bid for new replacement. But when a customer tells me, and he told me that he told those other companies up front, and of course they tried to offer him financing and all that, and he said even with financing, he still cannot do it at this time. And I mean, you know, when, when a customer tells you that, listen to him. Basically what this guy told me was he had a few hundred dollars to spend on this system. He didn't have thousands. So I came out here, I went through the system, I found a bad expansion valve. This outdoor unit actually runs really well. When I pumped it down, it pumped down great. The compressor seems to be strong. Everything seems to be running good. So the coil's in good shape. It was a little dirty. Um, I don't know if it's leaking. I didn't run the leak detector, but he's not financially able to do that. When I came out here the other day, I didn't have an indication of a low charge. I had an indication of a bad TXV. So, I, you know, yeah, it is old stuff, but the guy, is his funds are limited, which is why I've replaced the TXV, and I'm going to make this old sucker run like a Cadillac. Well, maybe not like a Cadillac, but as close to a Cadillac as I can. You know, when a customer tells me that they cannot afford a new system, or they've only got so much money on a budget to spend, I listen to them, and I do the best I can with what they've got to work with. So, it's in a vacuum. I'm pulling it the old way. You know, it was raining. I didn't have time to get the big Appians out. You know, which pulling it the old way is fine. This is R22. It's not as critical as 4KM. So, um, but it's coming down nicely, you know. 700-something microns. A thousand is good on 22. Of course, I don't really trust the micron gauge on this S-Man. I'm just looking at this. You know, I'm at 29 inches of vacuum, so. But uh, I did put a nitrogen test on it, and, you know, we held uh, 150 pounds for about... 30 minutes so you know that that's a pretty good indication and what I did here is, is I uh, I replaced the old filter dryer you can see that sucker was mighty rusty and uh, you know getting ready to start leaking and not only that anytime you open up a system you want to change out your filter dryer so we did that and uh, we're gonna get this man cool and we're gonna get this old temp star temp star train system back up and running Here's a quick shot at the coil down flow. There's the furnace. Let me see. There's the furnace up there. Now, TXV's right behind here. What I'm doing now is uh, taping up the rubber tech and I'm gonna, this cabinet, this door's in pretty rough shape. I'm gonna put some tape all around these holes so it won't leak air. I had to blow the drain out. The drain was clogged up. So, I thought I'd just give y'all a quick shot at this coil before we change it to TXV. I wish I could have got some actual video of changing it, but it just didn't happen. So, but anyway, this is a pretty weird situation. All right, we're all done. 
the old temp starts back up and running. Pressures are looking good. Um, there's actually not a desired subcooling on the door. So when I when I don't know, I shoot for 10. The other day when I came out here, it was at three. This was at, I don't remember what this was at. It was a little high. So I thought I had a low charge. Well, no matter how much gas I would put into this thing, this would never come up. This was at three, it stayed at three. It would never come up. So that told me we had a bad valve. Well, you can see now, some people say, well, I, I don't know, you know, some people probably say, oh, that's not a bad valve. Well, I just proved you wrong because I changed out the expansion valve and look, we're at 10 and the superheat's at 19, so that new valve is working. So, like I said, there's no labeled subcooling on this old unit, so I usually shoot for 10 uh, when I don't know. To me, that's a good range. But it is cooling in the house. The customer has already told me it's only been running about Let's see, let me look at my phone here. Been running about 20 minutes, and he said he can already tell the difference from when it was, you know, running from, you know, the other days and stuff. But it's playing around between 10 and 11. So I'm happy. Customer's happy. It cost him a few hundred dollars. You know, that's all he had to spend. So we worked within his budget, and we got him some air. So uh, that should do it for this one, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, guys, I thought I'd throw this in there. I'm on a job estimate right now. Look at that. This is a classic here. An old Johnson from the 1970s. There's your condenser fan motor. Condenser coil. Big old Copeland scroll compressor. Shorted the ground. That's what I found. Um, probably going to be changing this one out Friday. I got a change out to do tomorrow and Thursday. So I'll probably be doing this one Friday. Uh, there's the old door for it. I took the tag off of it because uh, I collect the tags. So the tag's out in the truck. But uh, yeah, that old compressor shorted the ground. But I tell you what, she sure got her money out of this thing. So we're going to... Uh, poor old woman's 80-something years old. She's on fixed income. So we're just going to do a little the little tan Goodman series. And somebody put her a new gas furnace in last year, so we're going to do a new coil because the coil's just as old as the condenser. A little upflow coil, a uh, little G, uh, V model tan series Goodman condenser, and I'm gonna, I'm going to put this in, uh, you know, conduit, seal tight, liquid tight, whatever you want to call it. Clamp it to the wall, put a disconnect box, get rid of this old wire. Put a pad with, uh, you know, my little legs on there. So we're going to make it look nice for her. But I want to add that to the video. I thought y'all would enjoy that. That's, that's a classic there.